This is Timmy. He's my dog. He's also very deaf. Today, I will be using him later on to demonstrate the idea of classical conditioning. Classical conditioning makes up one part of associative learning, with the other being operant conditioning. What defines associative learning is merely the linking of two events that occur close together. In classical conditioning, the association is between two stimuli, while operant conditioning is between behavior and response. In this video, I will only be focusing on the classical conditioning portion of associative learning. The idea of classical conditioning was discovered during the 1890s by Russian physiologist Ivan Pavlov. While he was studying the digestive system of dogs, he noticed that the dogs naturally salivated upon the presentation of food. Later on, he also realized that the dogs would salivate at the sight of his experimental assistant's white lab coats. It was this revelation that caused Pavlov to pursue his famous experiments with dogs, conditioning them to salivate at the tone of a bell. So how does all this work? Well, it is important to know that classical conditioning is a passive learning process, meaning that the learner does not have to think. In classical conditioning, the first thing you need is an unconditional relationship. This pertains to the situation before conditioning. In the case of Pavlov's dogs, the unconditioned stimulus was food. The unconditioned response was then the subsequent salivation of the dogs. He then introduced the neutral stimulus, which is the sound of the bell. Before conditioning, the bell would elicit no response. During conditioning, both the neutral stimulus, the bell, and the unconditioned stimulus, the food, are both introduced to the dogs, which then induces the unconditioned response of salivation. Over time, as the conditioning is repeated, the dogs learn to associate the sound of the bell with food, and would naturally start to salivate when the bell alone is rung. Now that that's all explained, here is my dog Timmy again. Like all dogs, Timmy loves to go outside. Over time, as I took him outside every day, I discovered how classical conditioning has inadvertently affected him. In what I'll be calling Timmy's scenario, the unconditioned stimulus is me approaching the front door. Because this is the door we always leave to go outside from, Timmy always gets excited when this happens. His excitement and more active nature as a result of my approaching the door is the unconditioned response. Right now, it's wintertime here in Maryland, so I have to wear a coat before taking Timmy outside. Me putting on my coat is the neutral stimulus in Timmy's scenario. The very first time I had to put on a coat to take him outside, he didn't react. However, as time went on, winter obviously has not stopped yet, and I continued putting on my coat before taking him outside. As the neutral stimulus, me wearing my coat, and the unconditioned stimulus, me approaching the front door, became an everyday habit, Timmy began to associate me putting on my coat with going outside. The neutral stimulus, my coat, then became the conditioned stimulus as my coat became all that was needed to get Timmy excited.